Hi everyone, welcome. What you see here in front of me are the uh, the worm bins down in here in my wormery in my basement. And each of these tubs, including that bag right there, uh, they've all got worms in them. Composting down all of my kitchen scraps and cardboard, you name it, all kinds of stuff. Anything that the worms can break down is in there. Getting broken down, turned into fine vermicompost that will eventually be used out in my garden. And we're only a few days away from hitting spring here. And, you know, I'm already in the process of preparing plants. I've got some seeds germinating, making sure that my grow lamps are working so I can get the, the plants once they're, once they're ready underneath the lights and everything like that. So all that vermicompost that gets created as a result of all of this composting that happens here is superb um, material for the plants. Not only in the little, you know, seed starter um, cells that I use to get little seedlings started, but also out in the garden when I get down to transplanting them in the garden. So today I'm here to feed a couple of my bins. And today it's the red wigglers that are on the um, on the schedule. So I've, uh, I've got a little depiction of my setup here in a little illustration that I created. So let me just bring that up here so we can all see it together. The, uh, the systems that are red wigglers are the ones that I've got numeric annotations um, associated to them. So everything on the ground floor that you see down there on the floor, those are all red wigglers. Um, the one over here on the right side of the center row are, are red wigglers. And up top, the two on the right are also red wigglers. Now, the oldest is always, in my case, on top. And then I kind of work my way down, sort of in a squiggly pattern, working my way down to the youngest, which is down here. And as you can see, the youngest of my red wiggler bins is at this time only nine days old. And the number that you see below it, in each case, the, the number on top is the age of the system. And the number below indicates how many feedings the system has received. So in my book, I always treat the food that gets included in the build of the bin as feeding number one. So that newest bin of mine right down there has so far not actually been fed since the worms got introduced. The only food in there is the food that was included in the build of the bin. So at some point soon, I'll be you know transitioning to the point where that too will be added to the normal feeding schedule, but not quite yet. I'm just going to wait a little bit longer on that one. And on the other end of the spectrum, the oldest of my bins, at this point, 168 days of age, also received a good number of feedings, as you can imagine, being the oldest. But you can see I'm depicting the number of feedings here a little differently. I got 18 showing as the normal feedings that that bin received over its um, normal composting portion of its life cycle. And the, the plus three here indicates the three additional feedings that have occurred in my attempt to try to lure the worms out of the finished compost. So those are feedings that are really, um, in my book, meant to drive the migration of the worms, not so much just the day-to-day -day composting that happens in those systems. So um, the, the regular active bins that you have in my wormery right now, as far as red wigglers go, are these two over here, which are the older of the four active ones, and the ones that are down here, the two youngest of the active ones. And like I said, pretty soon, the youngest of them will also be on the schedule. And for that matter, the oldest one might actually get dropped off the schedule soon. So today I'm after the, the two younger ones here. It's been a week since they last got fed. And I'm going to get them up on the bench so we can give them some food today. They're the two that are right down here on the floor. And, uh, and we'll talk a little bit more about them once we get to work on them. So... Let's get these babies up on the bench and get to work. So in this tray, you can see the food that I've set aside for their feeding today. And I guess one of the main things that are in here, I threw a few things on top of it, but the main stuff that you'll see in this tray is bits of mushroom. Bits of mushroom that actually did start going bad, and despite the fact that it's frozen, is um, very, very pungent. Kind of stinky. <laughs> So I actually took the time to go through my collection of just scattered, mixed, frozen stuff that's in my freezer and picked out as much of this as I could. I'm sure I missed a few pieces, so my collection of worm food in the freezer is going to continue to have 
a little bit of a foul odor until I do away with every last bit of it. But I hope that I've gotten the majority of it so as to, you know, try to reduce the stink in my freezer. And what you see right here is the younger of the two bins that we're going to start with today. This bin right here is the 54-day-old bin, which has, to this point, received seven feedings. Today will be its eighth feeding. And this will be the first break from what I've been doing in all of my Red Wiggler bins for the past couple months now, which is a process that I refer to as pocket feeding. So over the course of um, many, many weeks, I started feeding in one corner, and then the next time I fed, I went to the following corner, and so on and so forth, working my way, way around clockwise, making two laps around each bin. And, you know, as interesting as that was to do over the past couple months, I've already made the decision when I last fed my Red Wigglers last week that that, that was going to be the end of it, and we're just going to go back to what I normally do in my bins, which is feed the... Uh, feed the system right down the middle and you know it's just interesting to do that pocket feeding method mainly because you get a chance to observe how certain foods are breaking down especially if you don't disturb the previous week's pockets so you know if we really wanted to see how things look after a week's worth of breakdown you could look in there and you would see that and then maybe i believe it was maybe eight days between those two feedings there, whatever the interval was, I don't remember, but roughly a week in most case. So you can go back to what happened over a week's worth of time, to the foods that were placed into this corner, so on and so forth, going back through time, eventually getting to the oldest of the corners where, you know, you might even find that there's virtually no food remaining. So let's see if we can get these little guys off these pieces of paper that I like to place on top. I just like having a little landing pad for that moisture that would normally evaporate out of the system but collects on the plastic sheet covering it. Because the worms really do seem to enjoy coming up to hang out on that on that paper when it's nice and damp due to the recirculating moisture. And at this point, since we've um we've started, we've always been using these round coffee filters here. Just to indicate where we last fed, and that last feeding that we did was right over there. And in the past, when we were still doing the pocket feedings, I would explore each previous corner just to see how things were progressing since the last feeding. And then I would proceed to the feeding of the bin. In this case, I'm just curious to see how last week's feeding went, because last week, I, I believe in all of my Red Wiggler bins, the feeding consisted of strawberries, an apple, and pineapple. A whole bunch of yummy sweet fruits and I would have to think that the worms have probably done a number on on those types of foods but since it was only a week you know you never know sometimes they don't really behave as expected but I figured we would take a quick peek in here and just see how things are progressing some of the other things that we might encounter in this one bin at least is um, a couple somewhat oddball food items I don't even know if you would consider them food items, but like here, for example, I've got some beach towel that I included with the original build of the bin. And I've never tried composting fabrics before, but this is going to be my first chance to see how that goes. Here I see some of the apple peel that was placed in here, and this I believe is an apple core. I thought I caught a little whiff of maybe what's left over strawberry. The strawberries were pretty much whole when they were put in here. They had all kind of started going bad, so they turned into worm portions rather than being human food. Most of what I'm seeing here does look like it's apple. I'm just wondering if the, the strawberry and the pineapple might have just been really popular and gotten eaten already. This is actually pineapple right here, this chunk of pineapple. It was diced up into fairly small little cubes before it was placed in here so it'll all go in time the uh, the black stuff that you see around here you might think it's all castings but I believe a large portion of it is probably coffee used coffee was put in here along with the food and I've got more coffee here too not only do I have those little veggie scraps that I showed earlier but I've also got coffee to include with the feeding 
There's more of the beach towel. And this bin also, besides beach towel, has another kind of oddity in here, which is, uh, you might have already caught a glimpse of it, but it's right here. It's a pine cone. <laughs> kind of another weird oddball thing that I'm trying to see how the composting of it goes. And it's a pretty tough item. So I've been unable to crack it like this so far. It's the first time I've been able to kind of, you know, bust it. After 57 days, you would like to think that it would start breaking down at least to a certain point. Here I don't see it, but I believe the other pine cone that we did stumble on when we last fed this bin, and we examined the old corners, I think it's in the opposite corner down here, and it was starting to exhibit signs of um, kind of developing some mold growth on it. It looked, I don't know if it's mold, but it was starting to turn green, so I assumed it was mold. So I don't know if that's one of the early stages of a pine cone breaking down perhaps mold is what um, or some sort of fungi is what um, infiltrates it and helps the breakdown process of it so it's just one of those kind of interesting things that I figured I'd give a try and this is my youngest bin you know so the other thing you're seeing a lot of in here is the materials that I built the bin out of which is leaves but what you're really seeing here is mainly the stems of the leaves everywhere so um well, you know, the one, one other thing that I did notice when I reviewed the video of this bin's feeding last time, but I didn't even make note of it, is how there's a whole bunch of really fast-moving little tiny critters all over the place in this bin. And I believe that they're mites. <laughs> and they are all over the place. It's kind of weird. You kind of get tunnel vision when you're starting working on the, the feeding, and you want to look at the old food, and you want to check out the worms. And you lose sight of the fact that there's also sometimes other things that might be worth your attention. And last time I remember seeing these little creepy crawlies, I was observing them mainly. Um, I thought I had just seen them on that coffee filter for the most part. But it does seem like they're cruising all over the place. And um, I've been working on the reduction of mites in a couple of my other systems. I'm starting to wonder if these systems might be next on the list. They require a little bit of treatment, a little bit of attention to get rid of the mites. So rather than doing nothing, I've got this stuff here, and it's, uh, it's stuff that's known as diatomaceous earth. And it's really just like a fine powder. It has the consistency of flour. And it's, um, it's, the, it's just really microscopic little fossils, basically. Stuff that... Um, Stuff that, if you look at it under a microscope, has these extremely sharp, jagged edges. As you might have noticed on the packaging, it does refer to how it kills insects. So the way it does, the way that works is it gets in under the exoskeleton of insects and kind of breaches their um, their outer shells, and then they the moisture within their systems that keeps them alive evaporates, I believe, and then that's the end of the bug. And um, I've got a cup here with some little tiny holes in it. I think I'm going to try to do what I can to see if I can sort of put a dusting of this stuff around the outer edge where things are a little bit drier. And I'm going to see if I can get it up onto the walls of the bin too, because that seems like where they're kind of hanging out right now. And I wonder if it could help a little bit. Maybe I'll even sprinkle a little bit throughout the system before we drop in the food. Because, um, you know, it does almost seem like they're, you know showing up here in much greater numbers than I would prefer to see. I accept the fact that there's, you know, little creepy crawlies other than worms within most worm systems, but I just don't want to see things get out of control too much, so see how this goes. I know that a lot of times when you buy this stuff, it comes with a little duster so that you can apply it kind of in a, in a dusting sort of a way. But I don't really have that. It did, mine didn't come with that. <laughs> so I'm going to see what I could do about running the stuff around the perimeter so that the little creepy crawlies that are running all over the edge of the bin, once they decide it's time to try to go back down into the system to seek out more food, maybe what they're really going to end up in is a bunch of stuff that knocks them out. So I guess we'll see how that goes, you know, I mean, I, I know that the stuff 
or at least my understanding of how this stuff works is that if it gets damp it really doesn't work so mixing it into the material um, I think in effect would um, negate its um, capability but since things on, on in this bin around the very edges do allow for a little bit of airflow and I think the stuff in the, the material on the very outer edges is a little bit drier I figured I would try to you know pepper the stuff around the outer edge to see if it might help reduce the number of these little creepy crawlies a little bit well at least that's what I'm hoping for so now like I said it was um one feeding ago one two three four five six seven eight which is where I began over here eight feedings ago was um you know actually no there was no eight feedings ago <laughs> there was only six feedings ago plus the seventh feeding which was the food included in the build of the bin so this being the newest of my almost the newest of my red wiggler bins the newest that was participating in the pocket feeding experiment um, must have come online a little bit after I had already started feeding that way in my red wiggler bins so it, its first pocket feeding might have been down here so this bin actually never has received any food right down the middle which is my normal feeding approach in most of my systems and I am just kind of reverting back to doing that here in this red wiggler system as well as I'll be doing in all my red wiggler systems <laughs> that's so cool it's like a little volcano and it's not a plume of lava flowing out the top or hot ash or smoke it's just a worm <laughs> it's a worm volcano how do you like that all right I don't know that's just my goofy brain at work when I pick around my red wiggler bins so I've got food here what I'm gonna do what I normally do is I'm gonna deliver the food in a little pocket little piece of paper because the food is very nitrogen rich and the paper provides a little carbon to counter you know kind of um, counterbalance or to provide them sort of a nice rounded diet because the worms like a carbon rich diet but they also require um, what did I say carbon they, they like the nitrogen rich foods but they also require um, carbon to keep their diet in balance and the carbon is usually the paper and the leaves and all that other sort of dry materials that you use as bedding so as much as this doesn't really come across as bedding it's more just you know a diet supplement in a way but whatever call it whatever you like once it gets shredded into little bits it does eventually turn into bedding and I've got a whole bunch of coffee which is also very nitrogen rich but before we drop that in I'm gonna I'm gonna give them another food supplement which is the grit that they need in their gizzards to help break down the foods that they're gonna consume so I think the um, I think the introduction of food right down the middle of the system is sort of right right in time because it's so dry down the middle no food has been placed down the middle of this bin since it was put into service it's only been fed in the corners around the pockets so it seems like this little bit of um frozen food down the middle is probably going to help get things nice and damp over there all right so that's our first bin that needs to be fed today it's funny i'm just taking a quick look around the outer edge before we move on to the other bin that we're feeding i hardly see any mites just wondering if they might have started working their way down and hopefully a lot of them have actually gotten caught up in the <laughs> in the um diatomaceous earth and hopefully the stuff works on them but we'll have to see so here i'm using my feeding zone indicator to show where we last fed and then besides that i also like to you know usually like to have this sort of drop cloth kind of thinking throughout the rest of the bin so that any moisture that would normally just try to evaporate and gets caught by the plastic um, condenses and drops back down onto this little landing pad which ends up being a place that the worms really do enjoy hanging out in so I usually do my best to try to maintain the moisture that's in the system by shoving this piece of plastic that wraps this piece of cardboard up against two of the edges and then I use this 
supplementary piece of plastic to try to prevent evaporation out of the other two edges. And I know that I'm leaving two corners fairly well exposed to the, the air, permitting evaporation out of there, but it's not the end of the world. Even though things are a little bit dry in here, um, it's still okay as far as I'm concerned. If at some point I think I want to do a better job maintaining the moisture in this system, I might swap out this covering solution with just a large piece of plastic that I know I can push it all the way out around all four edges neatly, even the corners, to prevent ongoing evaporation. So, all right, onto the uh, onto the 73-day-old bin, receiving its 11th feeding today. All right, so now this, this bin being just a little bit more mature than the one that we just fed is a little bit further along, so it's received a couple additional feedings. Um, three more feedings than the one we just fed, and it's less than three weeks older than the one we just fed. But right away, I could feel the difference. It seems so much heavier just from those couple extra feedings. And it makes me wonder if it's also heavier, maybe because the moisture might be lacking in that other system. So next time I go into that bin, I'm not going to react to it right away. I usually try not to apply knee-jerk reactions to what I'm doing down here in my wormery. I'll usually <laughs> kind of contemplate what I'm seeing and think about what I want to do about it and kind of come up with a game plan before I implement it. Maybe even explore my alternatives and so on and so forth. So um, it is possible that Maybe next time, besides just giving them food, we'll also in some way try to address the moisture situation in there to see if we can help get things a little bit more damp, a little bit more cozy. And I'm not going to try to evict all the worms off this paper. I figure just by folding it this way, it's going to keep them in a nice damp and dark spot so they don't freak out. And this piece of paper indicating to us where we last fed, well, it's pretty much far gone. Maybe we just include it as part of the bedding with the feeding that we're going to apply. And if we want to mark where we last fed, we can always grab a fresh coffee filter to place over where we last fed. But now that I'm going back to my routine of feeding down the middle, it should be pretty straightforward. When I was shifting from corner to corner each time, feeding in a different spot each time, it did help me to zero in on where the most previous feedings had been. But it might not be as important anymore much more damp right away I can tell as I probe down into the feeding that was applied in here last week I mean right away I'm seeing some apple skins this more cubically shaped um, material kind of with the sharp edges it's pineapple and even though I always feel like I'm maybe sensing the smell of the strawberry like I don't think I see the strawberry and I mean I've I've Fed strawberry in some of my time lapse systems, and it always seems like the worms really go bananas over it and they just gobble the stuff right up. And I'm seeing little scraps of red, what appears to be red here and there, or pink. Maybe it's just some, some you know, little itsy bitsy tidbits of leftovers from the strawberry they were given last time, but I've got a feeling that that was kind of the hit, that was the popular food item. On last week's menu and they'll do away with everything that's down there but if there is something that they favor for whatever reason possibly because of its moisture content probably probably more because it's just an easy to eat substance the stuff will vanish pretty quick and the rest of it will go too in time so I'm just curious we didn't really probe very much into the older corners but let's take a peek how things are looking back here this is going back two feedings ago here too a good amount of moisture a few things that appear to be leftovers such as asparagus as well as the paper that was placed in here as bedding to go hand in hand with the feedings but they're definitely doing a good job breaking stuff down and there's a good number of worms in here doing it as well so that looks pretty cool it's gonna try to push those food items back down under the surface and um, yeah we didn't do much of this checking the older corners in the other system but we could do a little bit of it here before we wrap up today 
here too far fewer scraps but right away I did spot a banana stem which is now I guess three weeks or so old and pretty far broken down worms squirming around inside and out piece of banana peel so that was part of what we had done this for was to give us some visibility into you know how certain types of objects break down over a certain period of time that you can pretty much pin down almost exactly and I guess if we've gone this far we could check the oldest of the corners where you probably expect to see the fewest remaining food scraps although you know if the food scraps are some leftovers of a really slow composting item a really tough piece of food item then it wouldn't be surprising that we would find traces of it remaining even after all that time but um, it's always kind of you know a variable of numerous different things you know how many worms you got in your bin the food item itself maybe even right down to the amount of moisture that happens to be in that particular space within the bin versus perhaps an absence of moisture in other areas within the bin where you would expect you know maybe fewer worms going there just because of the absence of moisture and you know less than three weeks difference in age between these two bins but what a difference right the material in here just seems so much more mature in terms of you know just the breakdown process it does seem to me like we've got a, a much greater number of castings in here and there again that could just be attestable to possibly a greater worm population in here I don't know um, so we're just going to go ahead and place that recycled piece of paper down low within the system and we'll uh, we'll apply today's feeding in the same way we did in the other bin we'll plop in the portions into these little pieces of paper In this way they've got a little bit of a carbon food source right there alongside the nitrogen rich kitchen scrap food source pew I could smell this mushroom starting to thaw out <laughs> like I said earlier even though it was frozen you, you know you open up the freezer bag and you can smell you could smell this stuff despite the fact that it's frozen so I'm glad that I was able to do away with it and give it to the worms because they're going to love it, you know, even though we might perceive it as being kind of stinky and gross to them. It's uh, to them. It's, you know, five star meal. All right. I'm just going to get things covered up in here and uh, it's just interesting. You know, there's no mites in here. Thank goodness. I mean, I'm not saying there are none, like there's no, zero mites in here, because my guess would be that there probably are. And most systems do have a, a pretty wide variety of different creatures living in them, all helping with the, the composting process. But luckily here, we're not seeing the bin getting sort of overrun, as we saw in the other bin that we just fed. All right. So now, that other bin that we just fed... It might not be it might might not be paired up with this system any longer because um, the next time we feed I might be rearranging the the bins that I've got paired up with each other because the oldest of the bins that are still actively being fed the one I showed on the board earlier as at this time already being um, 125 days of age and having received 19 feedings tomorrow It'll be a week since that system and the other partner system that I'm running it together with. It'll be a week since they were last fed. And for that system, I think it might be the last feeding before I um, start trying to get that system geared up for harvesting. And then, um, and then I'll pair up the... Um, and once that becomes, you know, kind of going into this foraging mode and not getting fed regularly, I'll pair up... Um, I'll pair up this system with the younger of the two systems that I'll be feeding tomorrow, leaving the older one to not get fed. And then the one that we just fed earlier with the mites in it, um, 
that one I'll probably pair it up with the the newest bin that'll receive its first feeding since it was launched with the worms so this might be the last pairing of these two systems not that it really makes much difference but um, I do like to run bins kind of like as tandem sort of sisters so if I see something happening in one I can oftentimes equate it to um, what's happening in the other since they've been managed in a very similar fashion to help me with troubleshooting and stuff like that so like I said it's not a really um, significant or notable thing or even noticeable thing <laughs> from the viewers perspective but it's just one of the little management um, techniques that I like to use just to help with troubleshooting should it be necessary to do so. All right, well, that's it for today. I've got a little bit of cleaning up of things to do over here and I'll put everything away when I'm done. But before I go, let me just really quickly say thank you. Thank you so much for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. If you did, please remember to leave me a thumbs up. That's always really appreciated. And if you haven't done so already, also consider subscribing to the channel too. That's really appreciated as well. All right, everyone have a great day. Thanks for watching.